Hey guys, I'm Mark Bridge and welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Galaxy News. So DC, they came to play, y'all. They're not playing. They they want you guys to see their movies so bad. Like, they're not hopping off the train anytime soon. They, they may have had a few step backs. They're like the only cinematic universe company or shared universe company that is saying listen man just still give us a chance still give us the chance universal failed uh with the monster universe um uh sony failed with with trying to do the spider universe but i guess they're trying again with uh with venom which did well over the weekend so there's that um uh, the godzilla universe is it's it's not set yet you know we had two movies we had the first godzilla movie and then we had King Kong, both did well. So if King, if Godzilla, Gods of Monsters, or King of Monsters doesn't do well, then maybe they have to take a step back. So let's see how they, they they're going. You know, but Marvel is firing in all cylinders, and then DC is like, oh man, like they had some hits and some not, and they're like, nah, man, we we need to make this work. We need to make this work. And over the weekend, they dropped a five minute trailer. For Aquaman, like as if they wanted you to see, to see exactly what they have in store for you. Like two minutes wouldn't be enough. And you know, don't get me wrong. If if DC was doing well, you would have gotten a two-minute trailer, standard two-minute trailer, probably less, because they'd be like, you know, we don't have to push our movies as much. And the, the fact that you saw Aquaman already in, in Justice League and if Justice League was good then they really wouldn't have to push it that much but you know Ju Justice League didn't do work as well and they figured man we really need to sell this movie and we need more than two minutes to sell it so they gave you five minutes which was glorious by the way like that tracking shot with Mira um, escaping the uh, Black Mantis crew and he, she's jumping on roofs and all that type of stuff that was really really good um and you got a more laid back sort of badass aquaman he's not he, he's not as emo as he was in, in in justice league well at least how originally he was supposed to be in justice league and he had some of the, his emo stuff left over in when joss we didn't take over took over justice league but you saw a little bit of more casual um uh, arthur and then you're getting more of that in this movie. Um, and then uh, you, you saw a little bit of uh, Nicole Kidman. You saw her do her thing with her, with her well, it's not a trident, but with her spear. You know, see so, so her fight a little bit. But it's really good. It's really, I really dug the trailer, I gotta say. The special effects and everything. I mean, it's not top of the line. You know, you've seen better. But it looks good enough or better than average i would say for the most part for some scenes some scene looked mm, and then some scene looked wow that looks amazing so i'm i'm really excited for aquaman and i can't wait to see it in theaters and hopefully disney can pull this one off make aquaman great uh and if wonder woman 84 is great and shazam is great then we will see dc back on track with their game and they can push forward with their other properties even though some of them i'm not too, i'm like head scratching about like um why are they doing birds of prey instead of gotham city sirens that makes no sense but whatever um but uh, you know i'm wishing dc good luck good luck because i really want them to do well so we can have a good you know back and forth competition with marvel and dc you know Competition breeds, uh, uh, you know, the best artist, artistry out there. So I, I can't wait to see. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is Star Trek Discovery. Uh, the the trailer from New York Comic Con dropped, and woo, like, like the first trailer or the, the trailer for the first season of of Discovery looked like they were trying to, you know, emulate the J.J. Abrams verse. The um, the Kelvin timeline, like they really wanted to get that the people who saw those movies into 
uh, uh, get that CBS All Access and watch their show. So they wanted to emulate that feeling, that cinematic feel. Um, so you saw that trailer, they were like, yeah, they're really trying to emulate the movies. Now this one, like, wow. Um, they really are trying to sell uh, the movie here. Uh, sell, sell to the movie crowd. Um, like, then it looks like Star Wars <laughs> more than Star Trek. But, you know, I'm not one of those guys who are salty over how Star Trek Discovery is a lot more serious, a lot more focus on um, set pieces, large set pieces and battles and, and stuff that like that. Like, yeah, we, you know, I I, I, uh, I I loved The Next Generation and um, Voyager and, and Deep Space Nine. And those are the quintessential sort of Star Trek properties for me. Um, I was never a fan of the uh, original series. Um, I mean, it was before my time and uh, yeah, I watched a couple of episodes, but like I said, it wasn't it wasn't my, my time. So anything after that, I was like, I gobbled up. Even Enterprise I liked, even though a lot of people didn't like that. Um, but Discovery wasn't a bad show. Discovery was not a bad show. And um, I really uh, dug, you know, some of the characters. Even though what I missed when watching Discovery, I missed about Star Trek overall is that a lot more... You know, you could see who the main crew were, um, and and their chemistry with, with each other. Um, you kind of see it with with uh, uh, Discovery, but even though it happens like in later episodes, you get to formally see who. Okay, these are the crew they're gonna focus on going forward for the show. You know, but it it took a while for you to, for that to be established. Like while. You know, in the pilot episodes of all the, the originals, um, the older series, you know who these main cast are. You know, I mean, it it didn't it, it helped that you saw their names in the credits to tell you, okay, yeah, this is the guy that these are the people who are you gonna follow. But you know, Discovery took a, a while. But then now we have this uh, Discovery season two, and the it's to establish who these main crew are. Um, and it, it does have a lighter tone, even though it's still pushing the whole cinematic, you know, special effects, boom, 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 stuff here and there. It does focus um, a lot more, like it'll deal with a lot more ex exploration. And now you have Captain Pike, who we got a tease of at the end of uh, season one. Now he's now the new captain. Um, I suspect not for long, because he has to go back to the Enterprise. Or maybe, I don't know, I, I really... Because a lot of people were, were speculating in season one that some timeline, some hiccup has changed and maybe we're dealing with a different timeline here um, based on the fact that a lot of stuff doesn't line up with what we know of Star Trek uh, in the beginning of each of the series, like the original series and um, uh, what you call it, and the next generation. You know, a lot of the technology is like out there like above what we saw before you know so we, we are not 100 percent sure if you're still dealing with a different timeline here um but in case we're not um you know you know anything can happen that could make the timeline line up but i i, I enjoyed season one and i'm definitely looking forward to season two so i'm not an std hater i got that name std it's a shame that it's it stuck with that name right but whatever you know uh, you can't win them all, but can't wait to uh, see what they have in store for season two. Um, oh, and uh, what's her name? Uh, Giorgio is back. Uh, looks like she's um, doing some. Uh, I don't know if she has new powers, like is she camouflaging herself or something like that. But yeah, they were not getting rid of Michelle Yao that easy. <laughs> you know, you thought like, oh, she was just gonna be in that one episode. Uh, and then she came back for later season, later episodes in the season, and then now she's back again in season two. So yeah, you're not getting rid of Michelle Yao that that easily. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. Final thing I want to talk about is the now we're moving from Star Trek to Star Wars, and we now know what uh, the show that John Favreau is producing is called, and it's called The Mandalorian, and. Basically, what it's, it takes place after the fall of the Empire, basically episodes 
six. Um, so this is before uh, episode seven and after episode six, and it has um, the Mandalorian. Uh, uh, well, one of the Man- uh, Mandalorians from Mandalore um, on the outskirts of the galaxy, sort of like like a western, like a, a lone gunman, a retired gunman, sort of getting caught up in what's going on on the outskirts. So the first order isn't hasn't been sort of born yet. Um, and this is just dealing with the aftermath of the the fall of the empire and we just have this one Mandalorian. Um, I guess at that point Mandalore is probably fallen because they probably sided. I think they sided with the I'm not up uh, big on all the lore of of Star Wars. Um, I did watch the uh, Rebels and I did watch Clone Wars and of course, I watch all the movies, but some of the books, I mean, I, don't, I can't tell you what book I've ever read from the Star Trek lore. Maybe some comic books here and there, but I'm not 100% sure at, if, if it's told at that point what happened to Mandalorian, um, Mandalore. Uh, but uh, maybe it's, I think at that point, it's, it's gone or wiped out. And. Um, he's probably one of the last surviving uh, Mandalorians out there, and he's just trying to make his way through the galaxy. So this, this season of it's going to be ten episodes, and it's it's a hundred. It costs a hundred million dollars, so they're really putting their money into this. But I mean, it's ten hours, so if if you had just a, a real estate of two hours and a hundred million dollars it's a lot of money but it's 10 hours so you may you may not see it like a feature film status because they're producing so many hours um but other than that like uh um i'm really excited for the show um i think i'm really excited for disney play disney play tentative title on a whole because there's planning so much stuff on there and it's already is built in with so much content that you know unlike DC Universe which you know you, you gotta wait for them to build up their catalog because I'm not really excited for that Titan show to be honest but Disney play is basically coming preloaded <laughs> so that you know kind of think of video game terms it's coming preloaded with a bunch of content already that we're excited for um, uh, you know, even with like uh, the, the content they're getting from Fox, like the movies and perhaps TV shows that they're gonna put on there, or, um, or or just the Disney movies. It's like those are classic movies. Disney's catalog is classic, and then the Marvel movies that they already put it on there, and the Marvel shows. So I'm really excited for that. So Mandalore is on the top of my list, and um, um, I'm excited to see what John Favreau. Uh, um, has to do with it and then it's it's really crazy in that um he chose mandalore Ma- a mandalorian show to do considering in cold wars he played a mandalorian um because i was i was thinking didn't john favreau have something to do with star wars before because i was trying to think like I'm, I'm, i could swear he did something for star wars i just don't remember what and then i was like uh, I googled it and he's like, oh, see, yeah, he played a Mandalorian in uh, in Clone Wars. So, wow, he re- must have really fell in love with the whole Mandalorian culture and just wanted to explore it uh, further in, in the show. So, um, I'm excited and can't wait to see. All right, folks, that'll bring us to the end of this episode of Pop Culture Galaxy News. So, I want you to hit that subscribe button and drop a like, a uh, thumbs up comment down below let me know what you think of the stories i talked about today and uh, be good to yourself so until next time folks peace